Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys in a very in that very, very cold week, the Twixmas, I'm now being told it's called, between Christmas and New Year. And it's also a 58 Keys, which, as ever, is for writers like you and me who use and obviously write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. And this is the point where I would normally say something like, do subscribe, because, you know, there's so much to talk about. This time, yeah, I think you're going to see that really easily. Because this is a fast ish roundup of 10 or so previous 58 Keys editions, the most popular ones of 2022. I should say, I don't actually keep any kind of track of how many people watch which video. I mean, this is just you and me, isn't it? It's, it's two writers getting together to natter away. And actually, I think just generally, overall, I'm not 100% sure I see the point of a top 10 countdown of anything except. Every 58 Keys edition is intended to be useful, I mean, intended in nearly every edition. So please look at this as a, like a little index. If you see something you're interested in here, well then do go watch the full episode about it, okay? You know how this works, links are below and all that. Except yeah, you know how Candace works. I have actually cheated a tiny bit. Just to make sure this is 10 different useful things, I have kind of clumped couple of things together under one heading. For instance, uh, the main instance, really, all of the editions of 58 Keys that even mentioned Kindles somehow came out near the top. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do those as one. Okay. Number 10, Dashboard for Writers. The 10th most popular 58 Keys video is also the first one that I'm slightly embarrassed about because, well, where are we now? December? I've been working for about three and a half months to totally change this. There will be a new video at some point because there will be a new dashboard at some point. Having some problems there. I mean, for the moment, while I'm having those problems, I still use and, and relish this one. But with this one and with the one in the hopeful future video, the idea is to, well, A, have useful information displayed and all the time in my office, but also very importantly, two, to do it using a screen I've already got. I wouldn't spend, and I wouldn't recommend you spending hundreds of pounds or dollars making these dashboard screens, but I also never want to waste equipment that I already have. Plus, actually, it's startling how useful a dashboard is once you've got it. In the case of this video, the dash is on an old iPad I had in the office. In the next one, it'll be on an old Mac, hopefully. Number nine, which iPads are worth buying for writers? Now this one, this one intrigues me, actually, because it's one of a, it's one part of a whole playlist about buying Apple gear, the, the best iPhone for writers, the best Mac, uh, best Apple Watch, best AirPods, there we go. None of those, though, were seen in the top ten, nowhere near it, but the iPad one gets in there. I think we can take that as a measure of how really good iPads are for writers or for how Apple's lineup of iPads is currently just a little bit more confusing than usual. Number eight, Writers Essential Apps Bunch for Mac. Love this app. Say I'm deep into, well, editing a video in Final Cut Pro, right? But ooh, it's time to go write a script or work on a website, work on a magazine. We'll press a button, choose an entry from this bunch drop down menu thing that I've compiled up and wallop that's it every app that i have been using every document every window it's all closed and all of the apps all of the documents all of the finder windows that i'm going to need for the new task the new job are opened they are ready for me you decide actually uh, what you want opened or closed uh, you also decide what you want to open but hidden in the background because you need it but not yet you don't want it in your face you just want it there you can choose what you want to stay open regardless no matter what i'm doing i want mail open you can do that and if you choose to you can even have the wallpaper on your mac change as well all of which including the wallpaper is remarkably good for concentrating you know this way we have of we're writing this thing right but we're thinking a lot about something else i mean it might not be writing it might be something else we have to do but it's probably something we want to write bunch for mac helps you focus on the current writing the video about that came out in august 2022 
And actually now, by December, I want to add something to it. There's a completely unrelated app called Hookmark that uh, it did get covered in a, a very recent 58 Keys just a week or two ago now, which I think is also ultimately also about concentrating. Um, the magazine example, I said, uh, you know, time to go to the magazine. Well, OK, I'm in the magazine, so I'm working on the issue in Affinity Publisher, but I need to check something that the client asked me. Quick keystroke, and I'm in the email from that client. I don't just mean in mail. I don't just mean in all the emails from, from her. I mean in the specific email that that client sent me about this specific issue. And then having read that with a keystroke, I'm straight out of mail and I'm into the folder of articles submit or the articles rejected or into the schedule for it in numbers. I use Hookmark and Bunch thoroughly, yet weirdly, it's only right now talking to you that I can kind of see how uh, complementary, that's the word, how complementary they are. Complementary and totally essential, I think. Yeah, but speaking of essential, number seven is about keyboards, yeah, essential because we kind of have to have them, don't we? Normally, I love keyboards, but in June 2022, I was really grumpy about the keyboard I didn't want to buy. Yeah, all right. Well, I admitted it even then. The truth was that I did want to buy it. It's the Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. Uh, so with it, you can unlock your Mac or confirm a purchase, enter a password or something, just by resting your finger on, on the right key on this keyboard. I wanted it for that, all those purposes, because I'm used to having that. I'm used to having Touch ID on my MacBook Pro. So it's nice, but it's an expensive keyboard. Really expensive. And it, the thing that made it worse was it didn't seem very long since I'd bought an equally expensive keyboard that had started to go wrong. So so this is from uh, that video is from June 2022 and now we're in December so I can say actually thoroughly like it very much plus I paid for it on installments via Amazon so I can also say now uh, it paid off and I've paid it off number six the three biscuit guide to Apple pages from February 2022 three biscuits six number six 2020 yeah it's apple pages the movie that's what it is really it's a 90 minute dive into everything i could think of about using pages chiefly on the mac but also a little bit on the ipad the point of three biscuit guides in 58 keys is that they are meant to be this one video that tells you everything and yeah i, I think i managed it actually with pages i think so number five another essential app for writers well I think it's essential anyway hazel for Mac um, if I am uninstalling an app if I drag an app to the bin well hazel spots all of its other little files that it's dotted around the Mac and it offers to delete them too or um, actually this is every day most days I end up with anywhere between 10 and possibly 40 images that are done and published and I will never use I need to see them again well next morning hazel's got rid of them all for me i used to actually go a bit further i would have it archive them sort them into archives create folders automatically by the year the month the day and like yeah but i never bothered looking at the archive again so let them go hazel what it does hazel watches folders and then it does things to the things in the folders i don't think there's actually much in hazel that you couldn't or that you might not have already done manually but I do remember now that shortly before making this video about it, I had actually decided not to bother upgrading Hazel to make it work on macOS Ventura, and I quite quickly regretted that. So I was very glad to get it back. So glad, rushed out, did the video. Number four, Writer's Essential Apps, uh, another one, Alfred for Mac. Actually, I am pretty sure that this is the first time I've revisited what, what I think of as an essential app for writers and this time I did so in July 2022 because Alfred was updated to version 5. Alfred is a replacement or maybe a supplement's a better word for Spotlight on the Mac. You tap a keystroke you get like a search bar that comes up and you well you can find anything in that search bar. You can run shortcuts. Uh, it's close to endless really what Alfred can do for you within that bar and away from that bar I constantly use Alfred's Clipboard Manager. 
So uh, copy something this morning, paste it, whatever I was doing, but then realize later in the afternoon I need it again. Well, it's still there. Paste it again. Or I used to go through legal documents, grab this heading, that paragraph, that chapter, that word from a document, and then paste it all into a new document in one go, together. I bought the upgrade to Alfred 5 before reading what was new. That was how much I liked and relied on Alfred 4. Number three, Stream Deck for writers. Yeah, this is kind of another one where I expect, well, you're going to see an update to this soon because um, I was sent a wee little Stream Deck review and I ended up liking it so much that I spent quite a lot of money buying a bigger one. Yeah, I think you also you really need to watch this. Stream Deck, what it lets you set up buttons to do it well exactly what you could already do from the Max keyboard with a couple of keystrokes. But set up one button and you are hooked. Number two, back to the iPad with iPad Pro for writers, six ish months on. I don't often go back to hardware reviews in 58 keys because I figure if I've done it right then I should have said everything useful the first time around but in this case some months after buying my 11 inch iPad Pro in 2021 I bought a 14 inch MacBook Pro and I know that if that had happened the other way around I wouldn't have bought the iPad Pro I mean I'd have wanted it but I just I don't feel I could have justified the cost of the two However, ultimately what this really means is I'm very, very glad that it did happen the way around that it did. Because that iPad Pro remains a, a favourite device, despite everything I do on the MacBook. And number one. Where number two was this incredible device I've always loved, the most popular 58 Keys video, or actually videos plural, of 2022, were all to do with a device that, well, first as I was suspicious of, a bit wary, then I enjoyed then gave away, then bought another one again for myself, then bought an upgrade to it, only to then return that upgrade. It's Amazon Kindle. Short version. Kindle Paperwhite is excellent for reading books on. Kindle Scribe is not excellent for writing on, no matter what Amazon tells you about it. There is a bit more to it, or, you know, otherwise wouldn't really have taken four videos over the entire year to cover. Did not expect to do four. Actually, I didn't expect to do one. I mean, 58 Keys, it's for writers who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads, not Kindles. Yet, because you and I are writers, that means we are therefore also readers. And Kindle... It actually, it turns out, has a very good place in our tool bag. That's it for the 10. But also this year, I did do at least one other 58 Keys edition. They strayed a little from the path. And it was less about writing on Apple Gear. And it was more about writing, really. There could be another one of those very soon, um, last Friday in, in the year. But for now, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you've watched over the year. Now, take care of yourself a eh? right more, and I will see you soon.